Time is 1904 and Sherlock Holmes and his sidekick Dr. Watson are investigating a murder near a village called Mackleton. This mystery titled The Adventure of Priory School is a true story, well, as true as the story is written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of famous detective character Sherlock Holmes, who lives at 221B Baker Street in London. Next to the site of the murder are cycle tracks on a muddy road connecting the boarding school and the village. Surely the cycle based murderer must have made those tracks. And if Holmes and Watson could figure out the direction of the cyclist based on the track, they can nab the culprit. Dr. Watson is not sure as usual, but Holmes being the wisecrack claims confidently that the rider is heading left towards the school. His logic is that the back wheel is deeply sunk in the middle because of the weight and it crosses the other track and so the murderer is going away from the village. Case solved? Well, not really. Actually, Sherlock's logic is quite bogus. We might hate to acknowledge that super smart Holmes is wrong, but in this case, he really is. While the back wheel will cross the front wheel, but that will be true in whichever direction the bicycle is going. If Holmes had said that there were two murderers going on a unicycle, that might have been a better and mathematically correct answer. So let us and our math help Holmes and Sir Doyle here. The back wheel follows the front wheel always, unless you are riding a cycle backwards. And riding a cycle backwards is impossible with a normal cycle. And BMX cycles which can ride cycle backwards will come in 1970, 65 years in the future. So the murderer is going towards the village. Huh? How did you get this? One might ask. Elementary Watson as Holmes would say. Okay, let me explain the math here and Holmes was not particularly good at it. The back wheel of the cycle cannot turn. So the back wheel always points to the front wheel or the center of the front wheel. Most importantly, the direction of the wheel, either the front wheel or the back wheel, at any point can be found by drawing the tangent to the path of that wheel at that point. So if we draw the tangent on the back wheel path, it should cut the front wheel path at a distance which is the length of the cycle. Let's draw a tangent on the green track here. We see it does not cut the red track at cycle length. So green track cannot be the back wheel and must be the front wheel, which is freely moving and doesn't have to cut the back wheel path. While the tangent to the red track at any point cuts the green track and so the red track is the back wheel. Now let's draw tangents at different locations on the red track, which is the back wheel. The black dots are the black wheel locations. We can see that in only one direction, the distance between the dots and the green track is constant. And the blue line is the cycle. So the cycle is going from left to right. And the murderer was going back to the village. And so it must be Rubin Hayes. Now the case is solved mathematically. Maths can have indeed interesting mysterious applications. And now, since we are all expert math detectives, let's think if it is possible to have tracks where we cannot tell a direction. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems possible if you can ride a cycle in a perfect circle. Now the tracks will be two circles with the same center. The back wheel track will be the smaller circle. Since the concentric circles are symmetric, you cannot tell whether the cycle is going clockwise or anti-clockwise. But since you are going in the circle anyways, the direction doesn't matter. Unless, of course, you are a mathematician. So I hope this story will inspire you back to cycling and interested in concepts of calculus, a branch of math on which this story is based. Thank you.